Last Sunday, we celebrated the Solemnity of All Saints, the feast where we honor our brothers and sisters who have attained heaven. And then paired with that, we also had All Souls Day, praying especially for those who have died in God's grace and friendship, but were not yet perfectly purified. We pray for them throughout this month so that they may be brought into the fullness of heaven. And these last couple weeks of ordinary time really continues this reflection about the end of our earthly life. And there's two basic scenarios that can occur for us in our transition from our time here into eternity. Either death or the second coming. So if we look at these two, the, the second reading today first speaks of those who have fallen asleep, those who have died. And that's the most likely transition for each of us to eternal life. The tragedy of our human life after the fall and sin is that we are terminal. We may not know the exact moment of our death, but we do know that our bodies only last so many years. Upon our death, then we will be judged. And that's part of the lesson given to us in this parable of the wise and foolish virgins. God desires that we all enter into the wedding banquet of heaven, but we can choose by the way that we live to reject being with God for eternity, which is what we call hell. So the wise virgins whose lamps are filled with oil represent those who are filled with the life of God and are able to enter heaven. But the foolish virgins who run out of oil represent those who neglect forming a relationship with God while we're still here. And because that's what they choose, are left with hell. Since they did not value knowing God now, God allows them to choose to be without him for eternity. So that's the first scenario is our death. But the second reading then brings up the second scenario. It says that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord. So St. Paul here is speaking of the second coming of Christ. So before he returned to heaven, Jesus promised that he would come again in glory. So any moment during our lifetime or perhaps many years into the future, at some point Jesus will return. Now we don't know exactly when he'll come. It says in the gospel, you know neither the day nor the hour. And in other passages, Jesus does say that there will be certain signs, conflicts, tribulations that will come first, and it will not yet be the end. You know, some might think that the difficulties of this year mean that the end is nigh. But the reality is, is that no worldly thing is going to be the direct cause of Jesus' return. He will come by his own freedom and choice. And we know, all of us will know exactly when it happens. It will be a very public event, as Paul describes it in the second reading. For the Lord himself, with a word of command and the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, he will come down from heaven. So we will certainly know when it happens. There will be no mistake. And as we profess in the creed, when he comes again, he will come to judge the living and the dead. So here's the point when those who are still alive will also be judged by God. Again, either as wise or foolish virgins either for heaven or hell. Jesus' return will mark the end of time the way that we know it here. His second coming will also be the moment of the resurrection of the dead. Paul says also that the dead in Christ will rise first. So all of us, those who are still alive or those who have died prior to his second coming, all will receive their bodies back. But they will, for those destined for heaven, they will be glorified. And those for hell, we don't even want to think 
what that will be like for them. So let me summarize just these two scenarios. So if we die before Christ returns, then we begin with our individual death. At that moment, there will be judgment, either to hell or heaven, and, and likely for many of us, we might need some purification first on our way to heaven with purgatory. And then at some point in the future, Jesus will come with his second coming, and then the resurrection of the body will occur. Or if Christ's second coming comes before we die, then at the moment of his coming, that is when judgment will occur, hell or heaven, with whatever needed purification there is, and along with that, the resurrection of the body. So, in a sense, we do live in end times, but we've kind of been living in them for the past 2,000 years, because it basically means the time in which Jesus could return. So, there will be events in all generations of conflict between good and evil, but it will not yet be the end. When our Lord does return, it will not be our doing to bring it about, but it will be his decision and the intervention by the choice of God. His return will be public. There will be no mistake about it. His return will mark the end of the way we experience life here on earth. And it's impossible for us to be able to predict exactly when it will occur. And so therefore, we must be ready. And that's the final point of the gospel parable today. The virgins did not know when the bridegroom would return. The wise were ready. Their, oil, their lamps were filled with the oil of a relationship with the Lord, whereas the foolish were not, who had neglected to form that relationship with God. So every single day that we live now, we are in preparation for that day, preparation for eternity. Pray to God that we are ready to meet him. Whether it's our own deaths or the second coming of Christ, we know with certainty that we will stand before the judgment seat of God.